think. And again, it's not every day I pick a ZVZ to get started, but it's simply because of how good the following matchup should be. And there's also matches like, for example, Hero's got a couple of rounds to play, but then he'll probably end up playing Rogue. That's pretty awesome as well. So that's, uh, that's going to be pretty good tiers. To the bottom left-hand side, our Red Zerg player is Lasira. He will be open with a 12th call. As to the upper right hand side, it is going to be our Blue Zerg player, Dark. You don't pay people who start drama for the treasures known as the Gauntlet. Honestly, that drama was so worth it just to watch the guys on the Pylon show last night cringe and laugh at it because it made me laugh a lot. Because it really was a very laughable experience, the entire thing. It was such a minor piece of drama that got blown so far to proportion for zero reason at all. It was uh, really quite something. Anyways. With that said, we do see Dark coming down for the hatchery first. So Dark will be on the defensive from the get-go here in the first game of this series. And we are going to be seeing Lucia with the 12th pool finishing up. Obviously, he's going to get ready to start popping out some Zerglings. I'm looking to see what he can get done with that. So, first couple of Zerglings starting up. Sixlings currently on the way out. They're going to rally across the map. And, of course, it's up to Dark to try and find a way to defend this with the hatchery first. Generally, it's going to involve pulling your drones down to the low ground. He did go hatch pool gas, which means that the pool comes down just that little bit faster than if it was hatch gas pool. So it will get the lings out a little bit earlier on here to help him defend. Let's see if it's going to work out for him, because those first lings are starting to move across from the map now, and that spawn and pool is still only halfway done. So you do have to buy quite a bit of time still with those drones until lings are ready. And even when lings are ready, you're going to be a little bit outnumbered. It depends a lot on the micro initially with the drones, etc. So... Let us see, it's all about this control now at this point as Lasira comes across the map. He didn't throw down a gas behind this, so it is going to be a hatchery, it is going to be a, you know, a target of expanding out of this basically, and, you know, this makes the 12 pool opening more of a pressure play than if you throw down a gas with it, and then it would be more of an all-in with kind of Ling Bane speed. You basically have to win, otherwise you're just, you know, you're screwed, right? You've just committed so much to it, you have no hatchery follow-up, etc. With only mineral mine, you can get the hatchery and you can fall back to that. Let's see we go, those lings are nibbling the hatchery, and the drones are starting to come down to the low ground. So here we go, this is where the control comes in. The first couple of lings coming out as well from Dark, good pull away as Lasira turns to try and fight that. And now with the drones and the lings, I think we can probably take this fight. I don't think Lasira should be trying to target down the hatchery. It doesn't feel as though that's going to work. One drone goes down so far. Obviously this is all lost mining time from Dark, but it gets better over time, and especially as queens come out. He also has the spine crawl on the high ground. Lasira hasn't... Well, the Sierra's done a fair amount, right? Because you've got to remember that he has forced all of those drones, eight of them, to be off the mineral line for so long. So essentially, Dark's been on nine drones of mining. And so the is now caught up in drones. He's got his own hatchery going. He's a bit later on the Queens. But, as he continues to drone up here, Dark still has like a one or two worker lead, but I'll actually make that uh, it's the other way around. So actually, it's pretty even. So Dark holds on. One of the big things here is that this hatchery is still going to be low, right? And so Dark has to be so careful from this point onwards because the last thing he wants to do is to be losing this hatchery because like 20 Zerglings suddenly run by and they just suicide onto the hatchery because that would be 100% worthwhile for Lucira in most situations here. So looking towards that right now. As we are going to be seeing these extra drones continue to come on in, an extractor will be taken from Lasira on the low ground. It's kind of an interesting extractor to take, but you could kind of look at it in this way where it's like, uh, I, how, how best to explain this, I guess, but I guess it's uh, just sort of a bit of a fake out, right? It's like, you know, if Dark comes along and scouts, it's very easy for him to scout these gases. Okay, well... I mean, this shouldn't have happened. The link shouldn't have gone into the main. It's very easy for Dark to scout the natural gases, but he then doesn't know how many gases Lucira is actually on because he doesn't see the main base. Moving into the main base with that Zergling, obviously, that becomes a little bit of a different story. So, a little bit of a shame there. We are going to be seeing that lair currently on the way up in the main base. Evo Chamber and the Rotron still coming on through here. Another couple of drones currently on the way out. And a couple more extractors just coming down from Dark as well as both of these players are just setting up into the next stage of the game, which is going to be that Roach Focus style. Roach Roran, Evolution Chamber all coming into play at the moment. And we do see a good few Zerglings just sat off to the side here, maybe looking for their chance to come in and to try and get a little bit of something done here in these early stages. So I think it's just going to be set over here, and we are going to be, in the meantime, having plus one missile attack starting up on either side. So faster left and dark, which will enable him to be a bit more aggressive a little bit sooner. Plus one missiles 
Pretty similarly timed at the very least, so at least defensively Lazira is still going to have plus one to work with here. There's a couple of overworlds start on up, and it looks though dark. I mean, he is only on two bases, right? The third hatch is only just now taken. And because that's only just being taken now... Um, because that's only just being taken now, he doesn't really have a need to drone up just yet. And so it is this sort of point where you're going to start building a lot of roaches. Plus one and roach B is going to finish, you're going to have the roaches to attack with. And then you start to drone up that third hatchery. Little inject still coming down here as the roaches. You can see they're still just sat on this natural. You know, they don't want to go too far forwards as well. Uh, you know, this this hatchery here is basically so low that if you move too far forwards and it gets sniped down again, it's going to be so painful. As Masira, though, really abusing how much Dark is just sat at home, continuing to push out onto the map of these queens and picking away at these overlords. It's now going to be another overlord taken down. These queens have killed every two or three overlords, two of them. And that's pretty impressive still. I guess Masira also has lost two overlords. Kind of feels like that maybe shouldn't have been the case, but I guess Dark has the creep spread, so it actually makes it a bit easier for Dark to do this, whereas those queens were so far out there. I mean, that's just something... You, you can kind of do it because there's no link speed, but obviously if he was there a few moments longer, the roach speed kicks in, the roaches show up, and then you're not having too great of a time either. Dark will throw down a spire, so looking to transition in towards Middleus at some point here in the near future, as this first roach is coming down. I don't think this is a fight he can take. I mean, it doesn't matter if you don't have roach speed as Lassira, because playing defensively, you don't really need to reposition your roaches all too much. It helps a minor amount in kind of the engagements in terms of being able to reposition to create a concave, but for the most part, sitting defensively with reinforcements coming through so quickly, you don't really need that. Now, this is where it gets interesting, because Dark did just sneak out about an extra 10 drones or so to stop saturation on this third hatchery, whereas Lassira has just been pumping out the roaches. And there's a lot of things that Dark is doing that's going to slow down his own roach count. The Spire is obviously one of them. That's an investment of 200 minerals and 200 gas, which is not going to come through and be put into roaches. So that's going to limit his roach count. The 10 drones obviously limits his roach count for now, but will help him out later. The plus 2 min missile upgrade will limit his roach count, but help him out later. Everything Dark is doing is amazing for 2-3 minutes down the line here. But can he survive for two, you know, two to three minutes down the line? That's kind of the question as we see these roaches this year coming across towards the upper right hand side. And well, we're going to start working our way through those rocks here. So rocks going to start taking some damage. I mean, this is where Dark has to defend. He's down 22 army supply. And again, if he defends, he comes out of this in a great position with an upgrade advantage and all the rest of it. As he comes in, he sees no saturation on the third base. And so he will know how committed this is on the Sierra. Again, for now, Dark. He has that Spire up as well, but obviously he hasn't had the chance to really make the Mutalus. You know some Queens coming in here from Lucira, they actually have a lot of energy. Dark Queens don't have energy, so that's not something that can really kind of help out at all. And the Ravagers do help a lot, though the Corrosive Valves, well they force the Roaches to move, and that means they miss out on a couple of attacks here and there. And those Ravagers are definitely helping massively in this fight. The extra damage output they just have straight up is obviously big as well, especially if you can keep them safe enough, which is exactly what's happening. The Roach line here from Dark is not being broken. And we are going to be seeing Docs continue to push on through, and that's going to be G and G. Lassira's attempt to essentially all in with the plus one attack. And that said, let's jump back into the ZVZ series that we're focusing on, guys, which is indeed Dark versus Lassira. And again, uh, the idea of this is that we're casting this series because the winner of this is very likely to play Innovation in the next round, and I think that is a pretty sick matchup to get ourselves lined up for. So that is the current plan here to get in towards the winner versus Innovation in the near future. As we do have to the top left hand side, the Red Zerg play who is down a game, it is Lasira. And to the bottom right hand side, our Blue Zerg player is Dark. And well, it's going to be a pool first from Lasira, but not a 12 pool. You know, not as aggressive as that was last time around. So it's going to be a pool first into the hatchery, maybe just a bit of a safety play, or maybe he has something planned. I'd say the majority of pool firsts though. If they don't come with gas, it's very difficult to really find aggression. One thing you can see a lot of the time is maybe the six lings. And they can kind of like dodge around the first couple of lings of your opponent because of the way the timing works. So maybe that's the plan here. As the pool finishes, let's see how many zerglings get made. Well, nothing apparently because he just goes hatch pool hatch. Okay. Well, that makes sense as well. If you're a free hatch gasless, then it also makes a little bit of sense as to why you wouldn't take the gas. Although, then you, why would you go pool first hatch hatch? Ah, oh, that's interesting. Pool Hatch Hatch. That's actually not something I've really seen before as a ZVZ opener. You know, much more often we see kind of the openings such as Hatch Pool Hatch if you want to play Gasless. It's definitely a map where this style works, don't get me wrong. You know, the Gasless style of three hatches because this third base is so easily taken and so 
know, it's so simply held. But can he really... I, I just don't understand why pool hatch hatch rather than hatch pool hatch. Is he really just that afraid? Is that something that's a thing? And, uh, well, I guess we'll see. Dark just opened hatch gas pool, so it's very standard for him here. As we do see that link speed is uh, starting up. And uh, we look to see just how this will go in the next few moments. We do see a bait, and that's coming down on the natural here. Dark, so therefore, is setting up with a uh, you know, the chance to move in towards some bailings. So again, I mean, Dark just plays a very standard ZVZ opener. He will take the third hatch, and he'll have that link speed to play with. But what will he be able to do again? Because there's only one entrance to all three of the bases. What the lings and banes can do is not really is going to be very limited. It really is because as soon as a road draw an Evo Chamber, Evo Chamber Warlock comes down, well then, you know, then you run into trouble, honestly. So let's see what happens here. As we are going to be seeing that uh, hatchery. Coming up on the third base, and again, have a couple of drones from the Seer just working their way through this mineral line on the left hand side. So, I mean, he's already on the third base, and he is up by four or five workers. We'll see if Dark's investment into Link Speed and Banelings is going to pay off for him at all in this game. Because Dark just lacks a vision as well, right? I mean, I guess he saw this hatchery, so he roughly knows what's going on. But, uh,. Yeah, we'll see what he does. I mean, for now, he just looks as though he's just purely drawn, and he isn't even making any zerglings. So looks as though he's just going to kind of bite the bullet and accept that, yes, this sort of wasn't great for me early, and uh, just sort of go from there and see what kind of comes around. As you can see, the first few things approaching, but he sees the wall off, and again, there's not really much you can do at that point. Now, the one thing Doc does have is a hell of a lot of gas already, which he hasn't currently spent, so what does he want to do with it? He is actually going to morph in some more zerglings now, and it looks as though these might become bins, and this might still end up being a bit of a bust through in the near future. He's just checking the front once again. I mean, it feels like it, right? Like, he has to do something. He's got a lot of minerals and gas to spend. He's actually going to be supply blocked very soon. Another overlord just now starting as the inject has already come through. He's still just massing zergling. So, these things are almost definitely going to become bins. There's no two ways about it, right? Neil Sierra is currently massing up Overlords, has started his own link speed, so he doesn't have that much gas to build roaches right away here. And now the Queens has started to plus one missiles as well, that's really, really, obviously a little bit rough as we're going to be seeing these couple of Queens will kill this Overlord, that allows the links to come across the map without being seen for a very long time. And there is uh, Dark, well he's going to try and hide those Banes morphing in up there, but Lucira sees it and immediately cancels the plus one missile attack upgrade, realizes what's going on right now. Here come the rest of the Zerglings as well, more reinforcements to Dark too. It's going to be a full secondary wall off. Where do the Banes connect into? Maybe the Rotron would be a good target because mm, I, I like the Rotron, but then also down here would also make a lot of sense because you can bust through and there is going to be a gap. Oh man, well this is going to be rough, but at least the Roaches get into a good little uh, position where they're choked up, but the Baneling damage is outstanding so far. And you're going to see a few more Banes showing up as well. Now the Roaches in that little bit of a corridor really can't be engaged by these Zerglings, and that's why they head up into the main base instead, where there's so much more potential damage here. It's dark. He's going to find some drones already, and honestly, he's probably just going to be continuing to look for more over the next few moments. Dark, 34 to 15 workers right now. Army Supply is in the lead with Dark as well. He's got everything he needs. The Roaches are just not going to stand up to this. And GG, Dark takes game number two with the aggressive link.